yeah, he's been messed up. That descaled big time. Floats down, floats down. Yep, we're on. Oh, it's a trout. No way. No freaking way. Look at the size of it. It. We're out. I've got a big squid eating my mullet. Oh, yes. We're on. <laughs> oh, damn. Oh. Well, good morning legends, and as you can see, we are down the beach today. It is a dreary old day around the corner. It is windy as all hell, so we've got this tiny little stretch of calm in our whole area, and we're going on a land-based mission today. You would have seen, we got ourselves a wad of big live mullet, and we are going to swim some live baits out over these rock shelves. So basically, the rock here goes out, drops off, bit of sand, bit of weed, bit of reef and uh, you get all sorts swimming past here but I've never fished it. It's right on my doorstep, never fished it. So what we're going to do is we're going to float some big liveys out under the floats and uh, see if anything smashes it. So this area gets hit pretty heavily with boats but they don't generally come in this close so I'm hoping the fish might be hiding in a bit shallower and we'll get on. So I'm going to get some fresh water for the mullet, keep them nice and lively and uh, yeah, I've got the uh, old Kmart special boots on today, <laughs> bit of rock crawling and I'm going to be wading out there so I'll probably be in waist deep water a lot of the time, we'll flick these liveys out over these rocks, hopefully a big fish comes up and smashes it, so let's get these liveys sorted and we'll get a bait in the water, pretty excited, I reckon it's going to happen.
Oh, these shoes are good on the rocks. It's a good start. It's for live bait. Idea between the holes all through the bucket is just fresh water filtrates through the bucket and it just floats around so you get no stagnant water or toxic air from the mullet being in a confined space and they stay alive for ages so let's tie this off so I don't end up losing all my liveys Beautiful, you can just waft around, be happy. Go get a livey, we're good. didn't think this part through too well. <laughs> Gotta get one mower there. I'll be dog on first, I think. Sure that's done up tight, then we'll lose all our bait that we just caught. Water in with this fella. He's ready to go. Beautiful. Okay. Float rig. My bait is ready to go. Big horse. Swimming like a champ. Okay, now I've just got to somehow walk these rocks out a bit deeper. See how we go. <laughs> okay, oh, we're wading pretty deep here. The idea is hopefully get out past those mangroves. So let's see how we go. Whoa. This could get interesting. So far so good on the shoe front, I'm glad I bought them. Oh, old mullet's doing good over there. Oof. A bit of swell coming in. <laughs> we could be swimming at any point. Oh, here we go. So this could get very, very interesting. Let's see. It. Okay guys, we're pretty much here, I've bottled my way out past this point, I think I might try and get to that one. There's a school of bait just out here I can see, and there's rocks all around, so we're just going to give our live mullet a bit of a lob out there, and let him do his own thing. Whew. See what happens. So we're running the Pen Authority 5500. So it's loaded with 30 pound and you would have seen that blue kind of leader thing and that's actually a short stint of 65 pound braid and I'm using the braid as a leader instead of a big long mono leader and that obviously you saw that gets my casts further and it's uh, something I've noticed on the South African channels for their casting and distance and uh, they use braid as a abrasion resistant leader instead of mono so instead of using 80 pound mono they use like 150 pound braid and uh yeah seems to work for them so i'm gonna give it a crack because i like the idea uh and it's an fg knot braid to braid fg knot and then yeah shoots through your guides like super super nice compared to a mono so yeah that floats 
down at sink, it's going quite nicely, he's just swimming around out there, so we'll let him keep going and the idea is if the float shoots off or he shoots down, we'll uh, yeah, set the hook and see what we can get. We got another rain school just about to hit us by the looks of this. It's coming up there, it looks very rainy, so uh, yeah, we'll just keep on it here, see what happens. Can only try, and if this spot doesn't work, I've got another spot that I can give a crack, but uh, it's going to be a lot windier, so we'll see how we go. We'll let this guy swim around for a while, see what happens. We can always throw big slabs of mullet out here too, so I'm not too concerned if the big live bait whops around for half an hour and doesn't get eaten. We'll uh, cross that bridge when it gets to it, but it would be nice to see him get smacked straight up. Oh, I just had some bait spray legit two metres out the back of my float and then the float shot back in towards the rock. So something's out there and I think my lorry got quite scared of it. So This could, this could actually happen, which would be sick. Just need my livey to swim away. There's like a rock shelf out here and he's he's swimming back in towards and probably sitting on top of the real shallow part of the rock. So if he can swim out past it, I reckon I reckon he's gonna be in trouble. I might try and throw him out again. See if we can get him past that rock shelf. Anything that can eat a mullet this big would be cool to catch, especially pretty much half swimming, like um past knee deep here, she's getting pretty a long way from the shore. <laughs> Starting to rain. Oh, okay. Hopefully the big splash brings something in too. Oh that mullet just got whacked hard on the surface by something. And he's been sitting there for a while now and it never came back. Oh, that was close. I think whatever was harassing it wasn't big enough to actually eat the mullet, but it wanted to give it a crack anyway. That's pretty funny. Let's have a look at him. Oh yeah, he's been messed up. Look at that. Descaled big time. It's starting to rain now, so I'm going to wade back in. We'll take this fella off. We'll use him as strip bait later on. And uh, I've got a fair walk to get back in. Takes me a while. So we'll go back in, shelter from this rain squall that's going over. And we'll put a fresh livey on. Wade our way back out. Oh. Tell you what, this is hard, whoa, hard work and slippery, but uh, I reckon if we get something big, it's definitely going to be worth it because this is a uh, pretty cool way to fish, I have to admit. I've got a feeling the lower tide might be better because the tide's still coming in now and it will be coming in for a little while yet, which means I'm going to not be able to get out as this far in a little bit. So yeah, we might have to come back to Savo on the run out tide and see how it fishes. But that's cool. Whoa, Jesus. Let's see if I can even make it back. <laughs> oh. It feels a lot slipperier now than on the way out for some reason. Okay. Third of the way. Okay. Oh, bait bucket swung around the mangrove. Woo! I'm basically swimming. Oh. On this rock. There you are. I'm glad I've got this little mangrove tree here. Proving to be quite helpful. With the bait transfer. Stay out there, Mr. Bucket. Okay, I'll try a bit 
with a smaller mullet. What do we got? back at it got our fresh little ivy I've swapped rods over because I had this one set up with a smaller hook so same same panel agents a little bit lighter rod and a 4500 but still 30 pound braid 65 litre 55 pound mono and a little 5 hook for the smaller bait so I'll lay it out here and uh, hopefully get out while this tide's still coming in, see if we can get out to our spot. Whoa! <laughs> Almost ended up in the drink then. It's close. Uh, I don't care so much if I go for a swim, but the auto <laughs> audio on this GoPro will be very muffled when she's full of water. <laughs> try my best to keep my top half dry for years. It's hard work wading past this current. She's pretty strong out here. Just gonna go from one to the other until it looks like I can't go any further. Whoa! Okay. Oh, she's freaking slippery now. Okay, I think this is the end of the road, guys. Legit end of the road. I think we're out a bit further than last time. So, let's see. <sighs> so, this mullet's definitely a lot livelier than that big one was. So, beautiful. So yeah, straight up with that braid the braid leader kind of set up. It's so much easier to cast than say five meters at 80 pound mono for your abrasion resistance. So I can see why they use that style of um, leader technique for casting. It's pretty cool. I'll drop some uh, channel names in a comment that I've been following for anyone who wants to I don't know tweak their casting and beach fishing skills or rock fishing skills because the guys I've been following over in South Africa are all over it when it comes to this sort of stuff so I think mainly because the coastline's so wild and they can't get a boat out <laughs> as regularly as they can in old Australia so we're pretty privileged but yeah, that float is swimming around like a champ. That little mullet is hooking out, taking line. It's exactly what I want him to get further and further out away from these rocks. And hopefully something picks him up. The second part will be fighting a fish from a rock that's waist deep, surrounded by slipperier rocks and trying to land it and take it into shore <laughs> but we'll worry about that it should I say when it happens not if it happens got to be positive worry about that when it happens oh the float just got dunked and my mullet is charged the current's going that way and he's absolutely charging that way against the current so something seemed to spooked him I had a crack at him, but either way, he doesn't want a bar of it. I'm going to keep my braid up off these rocks for now. Okay, guys, floats down, floats down. Yep, we're on. We're on. <laughs> it worked. Oh, he's hung me up. He's out. He's out. Oh, must be a cod or something. It's gotta be. It's got me in the rocks. 
Oh my god, it worked! Oh, he's in the rocks again. Head shakes. What have we got? Oh. Oh, it's a trout. No way. No freaking way. Look at the size of this. <laughs> wow. Okay. That's so sick. Okay, we gotta get this guy in before we lose him. Oh my god. Oh my god, we got a trout. A good one too. <laughs> Oh, okay. We gotta make this treacherous ride in. Oh, tower's gonna be. Whoa! That's chest deep. Tower's gonna be so happy because anyone who's had kids before knows pregnant ladies. Oh, that's it. We're out. I'll see you on shore. Oh, we just got done. <laughs> see you on the beach for the clean going. There it is guys, first time trying this and how cool is that? A nice little trout on the live mullet, you can still see it hanging out of his gob there. Absolutely nailed it. Went for a bit of a swim there trying to get back into the beach. So. <laughs> Rod and reel is absolutely soaked but luckily the, uh, the old pens are water rated so quick clean and she'll be back into normal. But uh, yeah, super stoked with this. It's my first time ever trying this. How good is that fish? How good is that fish? A chunky little trout off the beach. <laughs> I would not have expected this. This is absolutely awesome. I'm getting pumped. The tide's coming right up here. So uh, as I was trying to say before I fell off the rock, anyone who's got a pregnant missus will know you can't eat fish unless it's super fresh. So Tower's earmark this fella for fish and chips tonight. So crispy skin trout and chips and uh, that's our dinner sorted. So we're going to pack up, drop towel and the fish home and we're going to come back this afternoon and do a low tide session because I reckon there's some bigger angrier fish out there that are going to smash those bigger mullets but the tide's just too high I can't get out there now so we're going to take this fella home and uh, we'll come back here this afternoon, uh, charge some batteries and get back in for Stoked on this one. Let's get her home. <laughs> so we're back in the car. Tao's happy. She's got her dinner. Been reading the book while I've been swimming. And uh, yeah, live baits are hidden out there, ready for this afternoon session. So we're going to drop the lovely lady home with her catch of the day. And uh, yeah, trout. No worries. <laughs> trout and chips for dinner. And uh, I'll be back down here this afternoon. So going to drop Tao home throw the batteries on the blue eddy and uh, then we're back out here to try and get something bigger and badder so we'll see you in a couple of hours well guys before we get stuck into this afternoon's fishing session i just want to give a huge shout out to this video sponsor the legends at blue eddy now these guys have really stepped it up they've brought out this hot little package that you would have already seen us using in this video to date plus previous videos on Fraser chasing those big Spanish off the beach. Now what we have here is the AC2A power pack. Now this is the latest and greatest from Blue Eddy when it comes to lightweight, quiet, portable power on the go. These things are equipped with a Life PO4 battery which has six times longer lifespan than your standard batteries. They pump out a whopping 300 watts of AC, but with the power lifting mode, that can be increased to 600 watts, which is a lot of power when you're talking about a tiny little portable unit like this. They also pump out 204 watt hours of extended battery life, equipped with the up-to-date LCD display showing both your input and output as well as battery time remaining which is super handy you don't have to guess when it comes to these things your fingers on the pulse every step of the way you know exactly how long you've got left depending what type of unit you're either charging or what sort of power you're putting in whether it be via solar or AC. They've got 270 watt turbo charging for these tiny little units which will give you 0 to 80% charge in just 
45 minutes, which is really handy if you're doing a last second trip. And like us today, our camera gear wasn't anywhere near ready, but the sun was kind of looking like it was coming out. So I was like, bugger it, throw the Blue Eddy on the back seat, throw the camera gear on charge. By the time we get to the spot, batteries are charged. We have power on the go all day. You don't have to worry about waiting till everything's charged before you can make a plan to go. Grab and go. This is an absolute lifesaver when it comes to those sorts of scenarios. On top of that, they've got a super quiet operation in these with less than 45 decibels, which means you can have these running in the background or around children who are sleeping or anything like that without disturbing absolutely anything or picking them up in audio or camera gear and stuff like that as well. Not only that, even the smaller units like these ones are fully wireless and can be controlled by the Blue Eddy app, which allows you to control the unit as well as monitor it via any smart device, which is super cool. A lot of these sorts of power packs when it comes to the smaller models don't have all the capabilities and perks that it comes with the larger ones. But when it comes to the guys at Blue Eddy, it doesn't matter what unit you get, it comes with absolutely everything that a much larger unit would have. Now, it also has your AC and DC power charging, which has up to 200 watts of solar input as well. So you can just piggyback it off your solar setup that you might have for a larger unit or your battery set up in the ute, and this thing can be fully charged off-grid as well. Now, all of this comes with the industry-leading five-year warranty. So these guys back themselves to the wall with absolutely every product, and with every new product that comes out, they are continuously improving both the quality, the lifespan, the charging capabilities, and the design in itself. So more rugged, more robust, more portable, more lightweight, you name it, they take absolutely everything on board and are constantly upgrading their products. So you get the absolute best when it comes to your portable off-grid systems. Now, not only that, this little unit here is so small and so light, it even fits in my fishing backpack. So this one is now permanently on every single trip. I don't have to take a wad of batteries charge with me. I can fly my drone as long as I want without worrying about my batteries being chewed up. And anyone who runs GoPros knows that that hindsight mode chews through your batteries like you wouldn't believe. So guess what? Two batteries on charge continuously. Won't miss a single moment in 2024 when it comes to those big hookups. So if this is something that you think you might want to have a look at, Click the links below guys, we have got a discount code via Coastal Chaos as well as links to all the sales when it comes to Blue Eddy. They have got some rippers on at the moment and if you sign up to be a Blue Eddy member you get a further discount on that again. So check out the links below guys, they are worth every single cent and these are one of the handiest bits of kit you will ever have when it comes to charging spontaneously or off grid. These units are a must have for anyone who's running any sort of battery operated appliance or device and uh, needs those power packs in a jiffy. So thank you again, Blue Eddy. Check out the AC2A guys, you won't regret it. And uh, let's get stuck back into the fishing. And just like that guys, we are back. It's the afternoon, the tide is dropping. Currently walking on rocks that would have been in chest deep water this morning. And uh, we're going to try and get right out here, out to the end of this rock kind of point. See how we go. We've still got four baits. I had a bit of a look at them. I think one's on his way out. So we've got three liveys, possibly one dead bait. Might be a fillet bait, might be a whole bait, we'll see. And uh, yeah, I'll take it from there. So, leave the fishing gear up here. This rock's just going to keep getting drier. Rig our live baits. And head out on that point there. See how we go. So we'll get our liveys back in the water. 
get rigged up, get fishing. Okay guys, so we got our mullet ready to rock and roll. Let's uh yeah, pull our way out. Tide's dropping which is good, but I've got a fair old walk ahead of me out there, so uh yeah, I'll throw this mullet in the water and kind of walk him along, see how we go. Get Mr. Mullet in the water. Nice and fresh. Make sure he stays as healthy and as lively as possible. We walk out here. Got a long trek ahead of me, so I'll turn the oh turn the camera off and hopefully I don't go ass over. And uh, I'll see you when I'm further out there. Tell you what, this is slippery and slow going. Whew. It's real hard work. The wind's picked right up. You guys would be definitely hearing that. I'm sorry about the wind noise, but there's no waterproof microphone options. <laughs> so you're just going to have to put up with it today. Because there is a good chance we will be going in the drink at some stage the way this is going oh, that is slippery damn okay terrain's changing a bit I'm getting some big flat spots so it's oh, making life a bit easier but this wind isn't whoa <laughs> oh there's bait jumping right there so I'm not going to be able to get to that yet but I think I can get over here we'll give this a crack so here we go oh. <laughs> down. Oh. down for the count Oh, I don't think so. That GoPro didn't go under. <laughs> oh, it is so slippery. Even with shoes on. Okay. Woo! That's hard, Yaka. I want to try and make it over there. Mr. Muller wants to swim out. He can do his thing. Whee! Okay, crew, this is as far as we're going because I physically can't stand anywhere else. He's too slippery. Here goes the alivey. Let's see what happens. Oh, I've got a big squid eating my mullet. No way. That's a big squid. Oh, how are we going to get about this? For a cuttlefish? There's a cuttlefish, maybe. He doesn't want to let go. I can coax, coax him into one of these pools. I think it'll be good. It's a squid. Maybe I can get him in here somehow. It's quite a large squid. Come buddy. Got him again. He's keen, he's got by the head this time. Oh, got him in the pool. Oh, he let go. Come on, you can do it. Thank you, buddy. 
Okay, enough of that. Tide's getting real low. I reckon I can make it out there now. So we'll go back, get a livey, and uh, get her in the water. Okay, we got the gear. We've got a bloody long walk ahead of us over these slippery rocks till we can get out to where we got to go with all our stuff. So let's pump through this as quick as we can. Another livey in the water. Okay, so I've got a couple of live baits in the bucket. We got a couple of sections to traverse here, so I thought the best way was to put a couple of fish in a bucket because we're going to be swimming a bit. Uh, oh, my bucket doesn't blow away. Oh yeah, he deep. Okay. Things you do to catch a fish, eh? Jesus. Hey, you what, I'm happy I've got semi waterproof reels, that's for sure, because these things are copping it today. <sighs> Absolutely copping it. Just gotta get up on these rocks somehow. We've got about 50 meters to go. We're good, we're fishing, finally. Oh. Oh. It's deep out here. Don't know what rock to go on. Yeah. I think that's us guys, this is our perch, this is our zone, okay, or is that our zone, okay we'll hook a mullet up first and then we can wait out there, okay let's do that, okay get our live boots, We've got one rig, him in the water, just fill up. Oh. Well, it's been a grueling afternoon and the live baits just are not cutting the mustard this afternoon. Nothing wants to sniff of them, so what we're going to do the sun's out, the rain's gone, which is awesome, but the wind has taken over. It's got to be the best part of 20 knots out here at the moment, hiding the camera behind my backpack to try and get some good audio. But um, what we're going to do is going to slab up those live baits and float down some big strip baits under the float over the rocks and see what we can get. I've uh, seen some pretty cool species cruising around here when I've been free diving, so I'm hoping today we can pull one of those crazy critters out of these rocks. Everything's pointing to a good afternoon, so fingers crossed we can make it happen. So what we're going to do is we're going to modify these float rigs a bit, do a bit of a snelled hook setup, and uh, slab these uh, mullet up, get them on out there, just drift them slowly with the current over the rocks see what we can pick up so we'll get the re-rigging and uh, get a bait back out there so we're rigged we've just got we've lightened the leader up to 45 pound just got a single hook on there still goes up to our float oh, if I can get to it in this wind still goes up to the float to a swivel and very very basic easy rig strip a bait on there float it over the rocks see what we can pull out jeez Hopefully this wind's not too savage. Got my back to the uh, to the wind, so we'll see how we go. Old log baits here.
I'm going to start big because I want a big fish. And if we don't get any bites, we'll gradually downsize our bait until we find something. The tide's just dropping more and more and more, so uh, we've got to go further, ooh, further and further out on the slipperier rocks to get a bait out. So I think I'm going to enter the water again because it's safer for me <laughs> to walk in knee deep water and fall over than it is to fall over on rocks out of the water. Instead it breaks my fall somewhat. Because at the moment it is just inevitable. I'm going to fall. Whoa! See? It's sliding down the rocks. Uh, okay, I think I'll start here, there's a bit of a rock ridge along here, like the bait over there. Wow! This braid setup casts like an absolute weapon. Oh, this is gonna be sick. Okay. What is that? Oh, it's running. What have we hooked? What? Wow, well, that was about 30 seconds in the water. Oh, it's gone. Oh, busted me off on the rocks. Oh, on that rock ledge there. Wow! Okay, that didn't last long. About 30 seconds. <laughs> Damn, that is insane. Okay. Well, now I've got to swim all the way back, get another bait and another hook. So. Let's make our way back here, re-rig. Do that again. Two, another big fillet, another hook, another cast. Let's get one. This is looking real fishy now. This is just like rock shelf into the deep, rock shelf into the deep. It's got to be fish tucked up in there, and um, that's what happened. Mine went around and then back under the drop off and cut me off, unfortunately. But we'll get out there because we can get a better angle, try and pull them into the deep. Oh. This is cool. Just when I thought things were slowing down, just took a change of tactic and then bam, 30 seconds and we hooked up. Oh, that's so cool. A little bit more drag this time. Cause that thing absolutely screamed off. So. Yeah, we'll see if we can pull whatever else we get out of the rocks this time. Okay, so the float and the boat's not working anymore. So I'm going to quickly throw on a paddle tail and see if we can't get a bite. Should work pretty good. Very bait fish looking. Loop knot. The hook in these ones tucks up under the belly, so um, should be pretty snag resistant on the rocks. Okay. That will get a hit. Okay. Let's give it a crack. Okay. Oh, swims like a champ, sinks nice and slow. On to a winner. Cast the country mile. Oh, everything's good. Oh, 
guys, that's it. It's windy, it's getting late, nothing's biting. I'm calling it. I'm gonna go home, cook up this coral trout, so make the long trek home over these rocks, grab our gear and keep going. Long walk in. Oof. Big day, very big day. But uh, yeah, fishing's just not happening anymore. We almost got a good one, busted us off in the end, but that's okay. We got a nice trouty at home to cook up, so gonna get out of this wind. <laughs> Some fish and chips for dinner, I think. Let's get the hell out of here. guys well that's it <laughs> fish and chips is served see i wanted some fresh grilled fish instead of crumbed i've got a few crumb bits chips lime homemade tartare she is so fresh it's just flaking apart so i'm gonna try a bit of this oh it's good my part of the fish <laughs> Sure <laughs> oh god, it's so flaky. The tartare. Mmm, that's fresh. Oh, that's good. Very good. Okay, legends, we are going to keep digging in and we will leave you there. See you in the next episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Keep safe. Be happy. See you on the next one.